welcome to lesson four of the igneous petrology series. So in this lesson we're going to be looking at the lever rule and we're going to look at a phase diagram and we're going to apply the lever rule to understanding a bit more about the phase diagram that we're looking at. So a quick recap for the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson we're looking at Gibbs phase rule. Gibbs phase rule is denoted by the equation presented on the screen there where we have the degrees of freedom denoted by F is equal to the number of components C minus the number of phases P plus the constant which in this case is 2. Now often in geochemistry in phase diagrams we fix one of the intensive variables and the intensive variable that we often fix is pressure. So now that we fixed pressure we need a plus 1 at the end instead of 2. That's what's known as an isobaric system so a system with a constant pressure. So the lever rule is essentially a method for calculating the mole fraction or the weight fraction of each phase in a phase diagram. In the example I'm going to show today, I'm going to show weight fraction. So picture a seesaw. In the middle we have a fulcrum point, which our seesaw is balanced on. And in this case we have two squares either side which are the same size. So our seesaw is currently balanced, meaning we have an equal distribution of weight either side of the fulcrum point. So then what happens if that fulcrum point starts to lean either one way? To stop that seesaw from leaning, we're going to need to redistribute the weight on that seesaw to keep it balanced. Now this is the main idea behind the lever principle. So to get a bit more to the nitty gritty, so these are the equations. So at the top, this is how we determine the weight fraction of the solid phase, which is also known as W subscript S. Okay, And that is equal to the original weight minus the weight of the liquid over the weight of the solid minus the weight of the liquid. We're going to use these equations in a moment, so bear with me. And then below is how we calculate the liquid phase. So I'll let you take a look at that. So in true essence, what we're doing is we're looking for the percent of one phase by measuring the arm length of the other phase over the total length of the seesaw. Okay. So picture a phase diagram. This is an example of a solid solution phase diagram. And we're going to look a bit more at these in the next lesson. But what that means is we have two phases on the x-axis. We have 100% phase A and 100% phase B. Anything in between this is a mixture of phase A and phase B. Okay? And on the y-axis, we have increasing temperature. Okay? So for example, right in the middle there, we have 50% phase A, 50% phase B. Here we have 100% phase B, 100% phase A, and you get the picture. Okay? This line represents the liquidus. Okay? Anything above this line is 100% liquid. This line represents the solidus. Anything below this line represents 100% solid. Anything in between these two lines represents a mixture of solids and liquids. So picture a point existing here. If we think back to Gibbs phase rule, that is currently a divariant field, meaning we have gonna, we're going to have to define the temperature and the composition, okay, because now that's our intensive variable, of where that actually exists at the time. Okay, so currently here, so we have to define the temperature by there, and then the composition by there. So let's say that's around 75% phase B, 25% phase A. As the temperature cools, our point is essentially going to sit on our liquidus. And at the point of the liquidus, it means a solid must be being created. Okay? The solid being created is going to sit over here, and it's going to be 100% phase B. As our solid is crystallizing, it's going to suck out certain elements of our liquid. So our liquid composition is going to change together with crystallization of our solid phase. So this is going to evolve down the system something like this. Okay. So our system is obviously staying the same because we still have solids plus liquids. But if we just have our solid phase, we're going to be evolving from 100% phase B, maybe to 90% phase B, 10% phase A. Whereas our liquid is going to have been around here where it started on our liquidus. And now it's looking like around here, maybe 40% phase B, 60% phase A. Now, if we draw a tie line between the liquids and the solids, what we can do is we can work out the percentage component of liquids and solids in our system using the lever principle. And then our point, so the overall composition of the system, will be known as our fulcrum point. So now you're beginning to see that seesaw, just like I showed in the previous slide. So next what we would do is we would draw our lines down to see where they intersect on the x-axis. I've drawn up some numbers here. So the weight of our liquid here is 38. The weight of the original is 75. And the weight of the solid is 93. So using our original solid percentage equation from the previous slide, it can change to something like this, which means we've got 67% of our solid phase. 
and then we can do 100 minus 67 to show that our phase is essentially 33% liquid. Now something that I originally found confusing when learning this in geochemistry during my undergraduate degree is that okay but the short line is here so surely the smaller amount should be the solid okay but really that's the liquid. Well if you think of it like this if the point sits here on the liquidus and it's essentially still almost 100% liquid at this point the longest line is the opposite side right the longest line is the opposite side if we draw the tie line between the solid and where our point sits on the liquidus all right so really it's the opposite side okay so this longest line here get the mouse working this longest line here is essentially representing our percent of solids and the shorter line is essentially representing our liquids so just for completion if we do the other the second equation that tells us the percentage of liquid let's see if we got it right so we input that and there we go we have 33 percent liquid 100 minus 33, 67% solid. So here we're looking at our fulcrum point, just like that, with a larger amount of solid, balancing out our smaller amount of liquid. And then our system's going to evolve down somewhat like that, until we now have 100% solid. Then that's going to cool down, everyone's going to be happy. So thank you for listening. If you found this helpful, um, please stay in the loop by clicking subscribe. Any questions, drop them in the comment box. Thank you.